Hi guys, welcome back to Rose Avery. I'm Oliver and in today's video we've got a bit of all ups and downs of bird keeping as usual with keeping British finches and canaries. Um, we do have a few losses which is a shame but we also have plenty of excitement. We've got more chicks which have made it to the sticks. We've got more petters gone back down on eggs. We've got some exciting news with some goldfinch mules which you're going to see a little later on. And then we're also going to be covering how to secure the final round of the birds for the season. So I just want to begin with a huge thank you to everyone who joined the live stream the other day. We did a live stream on uh, Wednesday evening. Um, I'd not really ever done a live stream before and just thought let's try and do something to interact with you guys who watch my videos. So we did a Q&A. Um, it was about 80 minutes long. You can see it, the link is up here somewhere and uh, you can re-watch that back if you'd be interested. We're going to do a live stream at the beginning of each month. We're going to do a Q&A. You guys can ask me questions, whether that be a bit more personal questions or just bird keeping related questions. We answered plenty of questions the other day. We spoke about football um, after what's happened at the Euros. We also spoke about mainly a lot of other bird things such as shows uh, and loads of other questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next live stream, which will be at the beginning of next month. So let's get on to how uh, to secure that final round. Now there's a few different ways, um, you know, a few different things to do for this. And uh, it's mainly about just making sure that the birds are in a solid condition and, and that, you know, it's, that they're not going downhill too quickly in terms of going towards the malt. Um, so what I do for all of the birds is give them multivitamins in their water. So I use Mutavit, which is a uh, Versalaga supplement and we just dissolve that into the water where it's a gram per 250 mil works fine works great and we've got that in all the birds waters we also make sure baths are readily available especially in the hot weather it's currently 27 degrees today we've got the extractor fan on in the back we've got the doors open uh, and just trying to keep the place as cool as possible but obviously baths are great for maintaining the condition of the birds help them keep the feathers safe and also cool them down when it's quite hot like it is today and then finally I do uh, always make sure I'm offering a little bit of a supplement for what we would do uh, when we are actually conditioning the birds for the breeding season. So that can be conditioning seed, that can be egg food, and that could be germinated seed, for example. This time of year, especially while it's hot, I'm looking to use uh, germinated seed. We obviously get the um, you know all the vitamins and the good things uh, into those, especially when they sprout, they do release a lot of goodness. And then obviously with them being uh, soaked, they've got a water con content in them it's just some extra water for the birds really good for them so i'm really giving in germinated seeds this time of year just to keep them going they're going to feed the germinated seeds to the youngsters as well and it's just going to keep that uh, that condition condition sort of maintained just before we look to end the season um you know we're, we're sort of finishing the final well we're going into the final rounds now with with mid Ju july uh, it's sort of the make or break month i guess you could say if you're going to breed some hybrids or some mules now is the month if the birds have yet to uh, yet to produce them for you and uh really it's it's last round so if there's anything that hasn't bred you really want to be breeding it this month otherwise you're going to have to wait until next year uh to, to get something out of them because really going into august the birds are getting tired um you know that they are starting to drop condition by that point and looking to go towards the malt so yeah just heads up for that maintaining condition so now I think it's time for a catch up with the canaries as we begin every single episode with. So we're going to take a look at the new colours and the fifes. Now starting off with our red eyed satinates, not much has happened. We've got the nest built as you can see, but uh, I think they've just really sort of dropped out of condition now that they're going down uh, towards the malt. So I think that's the end of uh, the red eyed satinates breeding for this year. I'm going to leave the nest just in case they decide to click with this warmer spell we've had. But if not, not much to worry about, nothing lost. And we'll see those guys in the bird room next year. Sadly, the yellow uh, demorphics we have since lost. Um, we, the, the hen uh, was egg bound the other day. I am surprised because I have been given um, calcium supplements and crushed eggshell, which is here just to keep the hen uh, you know keep her going with it being the final round and multivitamins and sadly i found a dead actually on the nest and i was absolutely gutted 
we have the cockbird, but he's not in here. He's actually gone to the other shed. So um, just keeping him out of the way and he's going to be going into the malt now. So sadly, we did lose that, but we have bred some youngsters off them. But sadly, that's just part of bird keeping. You will lose birds. Even if you're trying to take those precautions, it does happen. Then we have this pair. We have the green Norwich cock to the yellow five hen. They've got two youngsters. We saw them in last week's episode. And as you can see, those guys are getting on very well. The, um, the, they're looking really solid, I believe. I mean, you could definitely tell. The bird on the left is a yellow bird, 100% uh, looking at... The, the, the quality, the colour of that yellow just on the uh, the back of the neck of the bird. And then, as you can see, we've got this other little smaller one down here. They've been rung. I've put an E-ring on those guys. And the idea of crossbreeding those canaries was just to give us a few slightly larger uh, crossbred canaries, which we can use as feeders. So they're looking well. They're obviously variegated birds, and it's, it's nice to see they're doing well for uh, what will be the final round for this pair. Coming to this pair of fives, they um, are fostering um, some eggs out. They've got three green finch eggs and one of their own eggs. And you can see we've got a little mouth just popped up. So we have got a baby green finch there just hatched today. I think it's a pied. So we'll take a look at that in the green finch update. And then coming to our new colour hen with our mealy red pole mule. Um, Sadly, uh, they have not rebuilt. I'm thinking now, if if there's no signs of rebuilding in the next week, we'll, uh, we'll probably split the pair up, remove the nest pan and leave that hen to uh, molt for a cell for now. So I think it's time that we check out the red poles. We've got some ma mainly all excitement and all good news from the red poles this week. However, we do have a slight loss. So we're going to talk about that now. But overall, positive news from the red poles. I'm kind of hoping these guys will finish the season with a bang. So we're starting as always, we have the no uh, normal split feo cock to the uh, normal hen. Now, sadly, this is the bird I'm on about. We lost the uh, normal hen who was sat in this nest I found uh, on the floor this morning. She was uh, a four year old bird, so she was getting on and I knew this was gonna be her last season. And sadly we lost her. She was on five full eggs. Um, I candled those eggs immediately when I found them. I've managed to get two of them under two different pairs of red poles, which we're gonna visit soon. But the other three eggs, they kind of just look like they'd gone too far and they'd been cold too long and they, they'd sort of faded. So uh, sadly, there, there wasn't really much hope for them and wasn't much room to um, be, be fostering them out either. So we might have two from this pair, but that'll be it. this'll be his, um, well, that'll be, that's his last round now for this season, but he will be staying on for next year because he is split fair and we're going to try and get some visual fairs out of him and one of his daughters. Coming down to this pair, we have the cinnamons. So we've got three eggs from these guys. They did have um, some hatch the other day. I did try and foster them out, but as we know, as this hen has proven time and time again, she will not feed for whatever reason. It might be the setup of this cage, it might be something else. Um, and we did, we did lose those even though I did try and foster them. But uh, sadly, it does happen and welcome to bird keeping. We've got our cinnamon hen to our Isabel cock. Um, they had some eggs, but sadly all dead in shell. So we're going to see if they'll go for one last round. And if they do, excellent. And if they don't, then uh, it, we'll be looking at maybe moving the hen on. Um, and I would like to be keeping Isabel Cock just to try and get some visual Isabels out of him, uh, which will now be next year for my fourth year and trying to get some visual Isabels on the sticks. We've got the normal cock here who is split for cinnamon, agate, Isabel and pastel. And he is in with a visual agate pastel hen. We saw this pair in last week's episode when we realised that agate pastel, who we've been thinking was a cock all year because of his plumage, has turned out to be an hen after it laid eggs. Well, that hen has actually laid us five eggs, all are full, and is also fostering one of the eggs from the Fayo uh, carrying pair. So, really good news from these guys is that we will be able to get some uh, visual mutations out of them because of the, the cocks, because what the cock carries, and then obviously the hen being a, an agate pastel, we should be able to get a quite a nice mix, which would be good. So, we'll see how this pair get on in next week's episode. And, uh, there may possibly be some youngsters in that nest. For this pair, we have our normal cock 
to our cobalt hen. She is on four eggs um, and they are all doing fine. They are all full and this will be her last, uh, this might be her last ever round to be honest. She's a three year old bird. Um, so we'll have to see, but the cock bird, he's fighting fit, is a 2020 bird. So he's gonna be definitely staying on for next year. We have then our normal uh, rare feathered red pole who's got the white flights and uh, tail feathers. Uh, and he is in with the cinnamon hen. She's got five eggs. She's also fostering out one of the eggs from the uh, split feo, and uh, her eggs are all full as well. So that'd be nice to get some youngsters from this pair. Obviously, we'll only be getting visual normals from these guys, most likely, unless that white does mean anything from him. Uh, but we, it will be interesting to see what comes from it. And we might, you know, we might ever, we might end up with some possibly whites. We could end up with. Uh, you know, we will be ending up with normal split cinnamon cocks and normal hens, but there could be a bit of a mix of things in there because of his path, his, um, you know, his line. So we'll have to see what happens there. For these guys, we've got the normal pastel cock, split brown pastel, to the cobalt hen. She has got eight eggs under her, I believe, um, all of her own. She just laid a large clutch. She's proven a very good mother. She reared five in the first round and three in the second round totaling eight so far from this pair and I'm kind of hoping this next eight might be able to give us a really good finish for the season and we'll see how she gets on with eight chicks um, and fingers crossed we'll, we'll we'll get some good numbers out of them and hopefully some brown pastels which will be really nice to see and then I just thought we'll visit the youngsters from that pair we have the eight gate that was fostered in that above pair but we also have two normals um, the normals are looking really good quality birds, to be honest. Um, they, they've got some good markings on the flanks, and they're just showing a, a depth of colour, which is great. Um, you know, some of them are quite pale, and then, you, you know, not exactly what you'd want in a lesser, but the, the others are looking great. And then, obviously, the Agate uh, youngster is looking brilliant as well. So, nice to see those guys doing well they're, for, they're um, weaned off now so they'll be joining their siblings and other baby red poles in the flights shortly this week's been a good week for the green finches we've had those youngsters hatch from the feeders which we saw earlier under the fives we've got one youngster in there at the moment which is a pied bird we've also got uh, a normal due out another pied due out and actually a canary due out as well in that nest so all going well hopefully all works all right and she will feed so that's some youngsters and that's the pines which we haven't yet had any youngsters from so really hoping that they make it and uh, do well we've got the normals which are uh, you know the best pair they are on i believe five eggs and i've also spoiler alert there's also two goldfinch mule eggs under there as well from the the norwich hen and um, the, the reason being is that she wasn't going to sit and I didn't have something else to sit and I thought well we'll take a chance here the green finches are very good parents they reared good numbers previously we'll give them a chance so we've put some goldfinch mule eggs under them as well so if they do end up rearing a mixed nest of green finches and goldfinch mules that's great and if they don't then they'll just rear green finches so either way um uh that pair's doing well. Then we do have the other pair of pines, um, which are the pairs to those pines. Uh, the, the other pair, by the way, aren't doing anything, which we haven't bred in cage eight. Uh, sorry, we've already got some youngsters off them, but um, yeah, nothing from them. So that's really the end of the season for those guys, I think. But for cage seven, the hen has rebuilt on the front nest uh, in the uh, grass liner. She has laid her third egg today and has begun sitting, really hoping all going well we will get some youngsters from those guys before the season ends because we do have chance of a gate pied hens in there as well and the cockbird is of better quality than the other pied cockbird so i'm kind of hoping that's going to give us some good uh, leverage and some good stock to uh, continue to build that line of pieds uh, into an exhibition line which is my uh, overall idea so our Siberian bullfinches have uh, gone back down now for their last round. It's their third round now. We um, sadly did lose the young bullfinch a few weeks ago. Uh, same for the pastel word as well. But we do have uh, one on the sticks, which is molting out. It's looking like a hen. I hope, 
I really hope it's a hen because I really do want a, a hen bullfinch and whether that's a, a Siberian like that or whether I try and get in some natives, which I am interested in. So if you do have any native bullies, either a pair, uh, sorry, a, either a spare hen or a trio, then I would definitely be interested in those. Uh, so yeah, just, just drop me a message on any of the social medias or there is my email in the description as well. But for the Siberian bullies then, uh, they've gone back down for their last round. They've got three eggs. I was kind of hoping for some more, but it's gonna be that hen's last round now uh, ever, I think, to be honest. She's she's five years old and um, really after that, they, they, it's just a bit too old to be uh, breeding them and I think it wouldn't go too well either. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a good round for them. They are going to rear those youngsters. I'm hoping we get a nest of pastels because they are guaranteed hens and I don't have any visual pastel bullfinches. So it would be nice to get a few out from them. So we'll just have to see what happens, to be honest. Hopefully we do breed some off them and that they do rear and all goes well. So fingers crossed with the bullies, three full eggs. For the Siberian goldfinches, nothing there. I think it's the end of the season for those guys, to be honest. And uh, I don't think they'll be staying for next year, um, to be totally honest with you. So th they're probably going uh, in sort of... October sort of time so probably around Stafford so with it being now mid-July and uh, we've not really had anything from the Siskins it wasn't a great start to be honest I did expect them to go down in cages and they just didn't bother we moved them then into the flights um, and we, we did have a nest off both of them the young hen just didn't rear um, and I think that was just inexperienced to be honest um, whenever I've bred Siskins before they've never reared the first nest because I don't think they knew what to do um, so that did happen uh, and, and she's not really looked at going down for another round so I think it's I think it's the end for that pair um, of breeding for this year and then for the other pair of Siskins um, they, they've not really shown much interest in, in rebuilding and going back down so I think that's the the, the end of the year for the Siskins uh, for, the, for the breeding season so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they'll be staying on next year, not because they didn't breed, but more because I'd rather focus my attention on the red poles and the green finches because they're what I intend to uh, show more of and would would uh, be more interested in developing. However, maybe one or two will stay on uh, for some mules or hybrid attempts next year. Speaking of mules and hybrids, this is where things now get interesting. So let's talk about goldfinch mules. If you were in my live stream the other day, I announced we finally have some goldfinch mules. And that is from this hen to our goldfinch cock. Now, uh, just so you know, this hen doesn't currently have those youngsters underneath her. And the reason being is because she's a Norwich, uh, she didn't really show much interest in feeding. Uh, and I couldn't risk that. So we'll cut to those youngsters now. The two youngsters are doing really well. They're being fed and they are being fostered. What's fostering them, you may ask? Well, it's a cinnamon red pole, the hen who is paired to the cystin cock. The reason being is that I felt that she had proven she's a good feeder before, last year and earlier this year with some young hybrids. So let's give her a try for these youngsters because otherwise we aren't going to be able to, uh, to get them out. So this hen has... Um, mothered those and they have hatched so they are being fostered now they're about three days old all doing well so hopefully some exhibition goldfinch mules will be on the sticks in the next few weeks so let's go down to this pair now we have the yellow uh, norwich hen to the goldfinch cock now this is actually the goldfinch cock who was paired to this hen and the reason being is because sadly we lost our n other native goldfinch cock um who did fill the eggs of this hen last round. Um, he just dropped off the perch one day. I've, I've heard that goldfinches literally can just click. And uh, that's sadly what happened with uh, with that cock bird. So I've moved the other goldfinch cock in here to keep this hen company and he might fill the eggs. But what I do have is some eggs, two eggs off of this hen with the previous goldfinch cock, which are under the green finch hen outside so i'm hoping those eggs are full and we will get some off that pair as well because we've done a yellow to yellow pairing we will get double yellow uh goldfinch mules if we do it and that would be great because it would be a real depth of color for those birds but 
yeah, so that's the, the sort of redone pair. I don't know if they'll produce for us, and if they don't, nothing to worry about. We'll just try them next year, but they have began to rebuild, so I'm really hoping that we might get something from this pair before the season ends. So let's look at this pair. As I just said, we do have the young goldfinch mules in the nest of this pair. So you may ask then, what happened to the eggs from this pair? Well, they are actually under the mother of those chicks. The Norwich is sat on them. Um, I don't expect them to be full, to be honest, because as you can see, the Siskin cock is going into a molt now. So uh, yeah, he probably didn't fill those eggs, but what we do have is the hen, who's been uh, a good feeder previously, so that's why she's fostering those. If those uh, Siskin red pole hybrid eggs are full, then we will be uh, fostering them out, um, maybe under something else other than the Norwich. But that's that pair for an update, and I hope they just do well in rearing us those little goldfinch mules, which would be really nice. So guys, that's the update for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and you've found some useful tips and enjoyed seeing all of my birds and how we're progressing in the final few weeks of the season. Um, still got some more exciting things planned. So if you were in the live stream of the day and I highly recommend that you do uh, go and join us in them. Uh, I will announce uh, sort of previously when I will be doing it, but it will be at the start of next month sometime. So expect it possibly the first weekend um, in, in an evening uh, or something. I won't do it smack bang in the middle of the day because then it's barely anyone will be able to watch. Um, so yeah, we do have some other announcements which I'm, I'm currently working on and we'll just have to see uh, a bit more on that in the future but it should be coming in the next few weeks so plenty of excitement over the next few weeks as we finish the season and some exciting announcements so if you have enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more please smash the like button hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next video